Okay, so what I thought I'd do is make a little video just looking at a few paintings um, that you may get for optional. So I'm focusing on optional here because obviously the National Fives and the Hires, you've written about different artists and different paintings for your mandatory. But looking at optional is something which is the same for whether you're National Five or you're Hire. You know that you're going to be getting five pictures to choose from. National Five, you're going to choose one of those five pictures. Higher, you are going to choose two. That's the big difference, okay? The other big difference, it's not quite so much of a huge difference, but remember this opinion bit at the bottom? Higher, you're not going to be answering that. Higher questions are simply the three prompts. National Five are the three prompts and the opinion. So you know for National Five, you're trying to get eight marks for this part here. And how you collect those eight marks, as we've said all along, is completely up to you. So you could go three, two, three, or two, four, two, um, whatever, as long as you approach each of them. Even if you got four good marks for colour and four good marks for line, if you don't approach media handling, you can't get eight out of eight because you haven't tried all three prompts. Okay? So the kinds of pictures you're going to get for your mandatory. You might get a still life. You might get a photograph, which we haven't really looked at, but you treat it in the same way as a painting. Look what's here. Composition, subject matter and tone. You treat it the same way. You might get a figure composition or an image of a person in a setting. You might get a landscape. You might get a sculpture. And sculpture is one that we haven't focused on in class, but sometimes people look at them and they think, do you know what, I'm going to have a go at that. So they have a look at what it says, materials, form and scale. So have a look at the legend. This here is made out of plastic waste from the ocean and it's a whale. You know, look at these big, massive um, boxes and cartons that have been discovered in the ocean, all blue colours, you know. There's an awful lot you could probably say about that if you tried, although we haven't studied that. We've always said these are these questions are very often a question of common sense. What do you think? I mean, look at the scale. It's lifelike, isn't it? Um, and you can sit underneath it and yeah. So there we are. Um, the kinds of things you might get for optionals. So what I thought I would do is have a look at some paintings and write a few things about what I would say or get you at least to think about the kinds of things you could say for um, these various optional questions. So here's a painting by Edward Hopper called Nighthawks. Um, my hires might recognise it because it's the same artist that did Morning Sun that we looked at a while ago. So if you were going to be writing about composition for something like this, okay, composition, imagine that composition was one of the prompts. What could you say? Hopefully, when you're looking at that, you're noticing the fact that um, the painting is divided up very much into very clear shapes. So we can see these people sitting at a bar and they are framed by the rectangles of shapes that are around them. OK, so if you're writing about composition for this, I would say something about framing. And I would talk about how these figures here, the customers, one, two, three, are all framed within this dark box of the nighttime, which is behind them. OK, the outside, the exterior of the bar, which is behind them, which helps draw your eye to them, especially this yellow slash, which comes down and brings us to this woman sitting at the bar. OK, um, I would also talk about perhaps leading lines and how the leading lines of the edge of this wall here are bringing our eye to the figures. OK, it's like a kind of diagonal. We've got um, look at this kind of wedge shape that's going on here. OK, so our eye is being drawn down here towards this bottom part here where the most of the figures are sitting. OK, so we've got framing, we've got leading lines. So leading lines, lines which bring your eye to a particular part inside the painting. I think it's quite an important part of this painting just to talk about how it's segmented up using very clear, bold, geometric shapes. So this painting has got a very definite rectangular kind of shape going on here, which is mimicked by the rectangles in the background, mimicked by these rectangles up here 
on the wall. And then all the areas where shadow and light meet, very, very clear and very, very clearly defined, which makes it an incredibly organised painting. You've got very clear cut shapes, organised one next to the next, you know, um, and these slashes of shapes are helping to frame the various figures which are within the painting. You could even talk about the fact that this particular character here, the bartender, is kind of hidden down within this long slash triangle of darkness. So he's kind of framed by the bar, if you like. You could talk about the repetition of these little stools which come along and they, they kind of repeat this beautiful neon green line which is creating the edge of the window here. And that kind of leads our eye down to this figure that's sitting here. Okay, so there's there's an awful lot that you could say about the repetition of horizontal lines and how figures fall within the framing of these horizontal lines. And then also the more angled, um, did I just say horizontal? <laughs> That's awful, vertical lines, vertical lines, goodness me. I'll hear, let you in on a secret, I have not prepared this. I'm looking at paintings and I'm just talking at you because you know, it's the weekend and I'm just kind of doing this for fun, really. And in a way, trying to give you a few more things to think about so that when you get to your exam on Monday, you're going to go, oh, yeah, I could think about this or that, you know. So, yeah, I haven't written anything for this. I'm just talking at you. So vertical lines is what I meant. Sorry. Vertical, 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 all the way across here. And then we've got the more angled line, if you can imagine um, a vanishing point which went all the way down far over to the left these angled lines here which create a little bit like a sandwich the up and bottom to kind of create these figures uh setting if you like it's a stage set you look at this and it looks like a stage set these figures have all been laid out very very carefully um we could talk what else could we talk about with composition talked about framing talked about leading lines Depth and distance, I suppose, is something that you could write a little bit about. Um, not something I've really thought about with this painting before, but let's have a little think about it now. Depth and distance. We could talk about how the foreground is very much this area of road here and the edge of the window frame here. And the, probably, you know, these guys, really, they're kind of foreground. It's the closest thing to us. Midground would be perhaps the other side of these two figures, so the back side of the window and then background far away. Really, we don't see much because the background is deep down dark in here with the insides of these windows far down into the buildings. So there is very much a layering effect of fore, mid and background. We could talk about how there is depth and distance there. Um, we can see distance, but it's not as deep as perhaps something like the Wounded Deer, where you can see all the way through down to the sky in the background and the sea in the background. But there is very much an understanding that there's space going on here. And certain things are closer to our eye, such as, you know, the detailing on the wall, this man here, and certain things are further away from our eye, such as the windows in the background and little details sitting on a window ledge up here. Okay, so there's a few things that we could be thinking about. Framing, leading lines, depth and distance. Let's have a little look at our composition flashcard. What's on the back of that? Oh, focal point, viewpoint, rule of thirds, rule of